place. Oh, hi, boss. Oh, yeah, um, let me write it down. Hang on. Brenda? Hi, dear. Sit down. So you sounded pretty desperate, calling me, wanting me to come here and meet you? Well, it's been a pretty desperate day. I mean, with Gabrielle and now Larry. We had another fight with them over the baby? Uh, yeah, and over you. And I know I told you that I wasn't going to get you involved in this thing, and I told Larry that you weren't going to help me anymore either. And what's changed all that? I know a way to prove that Garrick is my son. Now, it might wind me up in jail, Dan, but I am going to do it. I, I can't believe this. Why didn't you write or call? Well, Deborah and I just thought we'd surprise you. Hello, Gabrielle. Oh, my God. Oh, look at you. you you're all grown up. <sighs> Not much of me to look at, though, is there? Oh, yes, there is. You are the perfect ballerina. <laughs> well, hello there. I'm, uh, I'm Michael Grant. Julia Wheaton Medina. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so overwhelmed by manners. <laughs> Oh, Michael, this is my mother, Julia, and this is my very special sister, Deborah. Family, this is the man that I'm very much in love with and I'm going to marry, Michael Grant. Oh, Michael, I must say, I've seen your photographs in various publications, but you're even more handsome in person, if that's possible. Well, thank you very much. Gabrielle, your mother can stay as long as she wants. <laughs> Now, Brian, Cord, you have the nerve to get in that ring and wrestle with me. Based upon your choice of wardrobe, I don't suppose we're talking about Olympic-class wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. Real wrestling is a big bore, Cord. We want the kind you see on cable TV. Yeah, like when Titan picks you up and slams you down, yeah. throws you into the rope, and out of the ring, yeah! Exactly. <laughs> Elizabeth, you got to do something. I can't this time, Gina. It's up to Core to stay alive, I'm afraid. So, how about we fight to the death or <laughs> to your freedom? <laughs> or would you prefer a simple, painless firing squad? <laughs> This time, here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. They want to slaughter. Oh, listen to this. We got a wimp on our hands. <laughs> How about fighting me, Cord? Can you step into the ring with a girl? <laughs> Trust me, Cord, though, you got a much better chance with the giant here. <laughs> May I say something? Oh, can we stop you? <laughs> if you people are looking for entertainment, this won't be a very long match. Titan will need only about 30 seconds to pulverize Cord. About 10 and a half seconds ought to do it, even blindfolded. Wait a minute, yeah. that's exactly what we'll do. We'll blindfold Titan so Cord will have more of a chance. That way the match will last longer and we'll have more fun. Well, sure, why not? I could beat this little jerk without my eyesight. Sound fairer to you now, Cord? I suppose it does, yeah. Cord, no! Honey, you really don't think we've got a choice about all this, do you? All right, Jamie. I'll wear your silly costume and I'll wrestle your titan for our freedom. Yeah. But you better keep on doing it. This is working out great, James. It'll keep those lowbrow cons occupied and keep the pressure off us. I hate all this bloodletting. It's shameful, even for you. Tell me. Where is your psychotic betrothed? Hopefully making the bomb I asked her to. Charmaine. Yeah, Jamie. Uh, take Cord downstairs and get him suited up with a costume. The match will start in an hour. 
Look, honey, why don't we just try to make a run for it? At least we'd have a better shot at it. Honey, if this is buying us some time, hopefully Brain will be able to outsmart Braun, especially if he's blind. Let's go. I'm going, too. No, Tina. Ursula is lurking around down there somewhere. You'll be much safer here with yeah. me. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh. I can't believe this is really happening. It's all my fault. So, Julia, did you decide on a surprise visit when you heard that we were marrying? Well, I thought that a wedding seemed like a perfect excuse to see my eldest daughter again. Hmm. The surprise could have been on you, Mother. Michael and I just decided that we were going to marry in Milan. That way, I would have been ringing you in London as you were ringing our doorbell. <laughs> Perfect timing on our part. But why were you going to Milan? Oh, just a whim. <laughs> a whim. But uh, now that you're here, we will go back to our original plan and be married in Landview. Oh, Michael, let's not be too hasty about this. Hasty was when we were changing our plans every two minutes. Julia, I want you to know that I would not even be here if it wasn't for your daughter. She has kept my heart and mind and soul together through a very difficult time. Yes, Michael, I wanted to say how sorry I am about your wife's untimely death. I'd like to offer my condolences as well. Thank you. Thank you both. I met Alicia once hmm? at the Olivier's cocktail party. It was about a year and a half ago. Really? Yes. She was quite delightful. Very sweet, very bright. She certainly was, and, and much more. But uh, let's not get into my past life right now, especially when my future is so <laughs> promising. Why don't we all sit down? Yes. Uh, Deborah, I understand that you were going to audition for the uh, Royal Ballet of Mandora. Wasn't the audition recently? I didn't make it, Gabby. What? Pierce said maybe next year. He didn't say maybe next year. He said definitely next year. In fact, he said you'd be the first one chosen. But let's not talk about that right now either. I'll tell you what I'd like. I'd like to meet that darling little boy who's going to be my step-grandson. And then I'd like to meet my other grandson, Al. I'd like to have a tour of the estate. And I'd like to get to know my future son-in-law terribly, terribly well. Terribly, terribly quickly. <laughs> well, I think we can manage all that. But first, let's uh, get your bags and get you settled into your rooms. Well, we checked into your hotel in town, Michael. Oh, but that's silly. We have plenty of room here. Uh, Michael, actually, Mother and I do a lot better if we're not under each other's feet all the time. Indeed. But thank you for the gracious offer. Well, if you're not going to stay here, I can at least put you into the Emperor's suite at the hotel, and you will stay as my guest. Oh, no, we couldn't. But you will. Subject closed. <laughs> Just how long can you stay? Well, as long as we're welcome. We really don't have a pressing schedule, do we, darling? Oh, but surely Deborah has to continue her ballet training. And, Mother, you must have some very pressing engagements in London. Uh, not really. You know, you have quite an exquisite house here, Michael. Uh, thank you. And you mentioned that you would like a tour. I will ring Martin, my house manager. And the baby? Oh, never. He's out for a stroll with Melissa the nanny, but they should be back very soon. Yes? Oh, Martin, I want you to meet my mother, Julia Medina, and my sister, Deborah. I'm very pleased to meet both of you. I'm Martin Hamada. Hello. We hear that you give a grand tour of the house. I do indeed. Uh, Miss Medina, do you like orchids? I adore them. On days when I can't tolerate the rigors of ballet anymore, my favorite fantasy is that I give it all up and devote my time to growing orchids. Well, <laughs> then you'll like our collection in the greenhouse. Really? You grew this one here? Mm -hmm. Well, say goodbye to your sister, Gabrielle. You won't see much of her now. Well, at least we'll know where to find her. <laughs> this way, please. See you soon. Bye, darling. Well. Well, indeed. You're not happy they're here, are you? Thank you. You've been here since Max took over, but I hear the food's improved a lot. Yeah, it's really terrific. You know what? I'm going to buy us a bottle of champagne to celebrate your returning to the show. I'll drink to that. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Okay, well, let me tell you what Max is going to do first. He's devised a plan. He is going to put Gabrielle's story on Fraternity Row. He's going to have that character of Ruby, you know, the one that Megan plays, mm -hmm. go into the nursery and switch those babies. In fact, he had Gabrielle in for the rehearsal today, thinking that she would get so shook up over it that she'd confess. Well, obviously it didn't work. No, but the thing that happened is that her reaction made Max absolutely positive that I am right. So he wants to follow through with the story on the show? Yeah. 
I mean, he thinks that it's really good for the ratings, and he thinks the pressure is going to be good for her. But the thing is, Dan, I don't trust that woman's conscience at all. Well, neither do I. Well, that's why I have to come up with a plan that will prove that Garrick is my son. All right. All right. Tell me your plot. Okay. Even though I don't necessarily want to hear this, Brenda. You know, my friend Lee, I was telling you about the lab technician in Philadelphia. Well, I phoned him last night, and he has agreed to run the genetic test that will prove... Garrick's parentage. Isn't that great? So that means you're going to have to get Rick's blood again. Yeah, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get along with that baby. Brenda. Dan. You called me here to confess, not to tell me your plot. Why? Why me? Because I... I, I want your opinion. Brenda, I told Dan that I would stay away from him. You and I agreed that I'm too involved in this. And you're engaged to him. Why? Why don't you just confide in him? Well, I would like to, Dan, but I can't. Well, if you can't confide in him, what kind of marriage are you going to have? Brenda, I'm sorry. What, for being right? Believe me, don't think I haven't thought about it. In fact, today, boy, I was just like this close from giving Larry his ring back. You were? Yeah, but he didn't let me, and then I thought about it, and I think when the baby's back, everything's gonna be okay. I'll be able to talk to Larry again. Of course you will. Yeah. I'll be your stepson, and I'll be your husband's pain in the neck, kid. Dan, you are my dearest friend. You have gotten me through the worst time in my whole life. So when are you gonna take the sample of the baby's blood? Tomorrow morning. Well, when? I'll go with you. No, you will not. Absolutely not. No, you Brenda, this is, no, no, Brenda, this is a very touchy situation here, and I want to be in on it with you. Now, I have told you, you have given me enough help, and you have, I have caused you enough trouble, and Larry would have a fit if you and I both ended up in jail together. <laughs> but sometimes I need somebody on the outside to come break me out of there in case I get busted. All right. Okay? All right. Don't run off too fast. All right. Oh, I got to get out of here. Okay. I'm not usually this rude, but I have some things to do, and thank you. Now, are you going to let me in on all the details? Of course I will. Max says Ruby will be confiding in me. Oh, I get it. So Ruby's conscience is going to convince her to confess to Father Tom. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I wonder if he'll convince Ruby to tell Rodney. All right, are you kidding me? That's going to take months and months. You know, I am really happy that we're working together again. I've missed that. Really? Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what to think since I haven't heard from you. So I decided to give you a call and take a chance. Please, don't think that it was you. I am very fond of you. You know that. It's just... Well, you know about me and Wade. I mean, everybody at the studio does. Yeah. I wasn't sure what to feel. I mean, for a long time, I didn't think Wade was good enough for you. And, and at the same time, I know how much you wanted your marriage to work out with him. And it settled. I mean, no chance of you guys getting back together. No. The divorce papers are due any day now. I mean, who knows? That could be my mailbox as we speak. Anything I can do for you? Well, I kind of like what you've been doing. Making me laugh. Making me feel better about myself. Hey, that's like breathing to me. Mm -hmm. Can I make a toast? Sure. To new beginnings. Yeah. Some we're looking forward to, and some we're not. I've already told you, my mother and I get on each other's nerves easily. She has a flair for the dramatic, and her showing up here without being announced is just one good example of it. Yes, and just think, we could have been on our way to Rome. You're not seriously thinking of cancelling that, are you? Yes, I am. I only agreed to it because you were so anxious. But why should we take Garrick to live in another country when he lives in the best damn country in the world? Well, I didn't mean forever. Perhaps a year or just six months. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We will honeymoon in Europe, and then we'll come home. Mm. <laughs> I do find it hard to argue with you. <laughs> Anything you say, Mr. Grant. Mm -hmm. 
boat. Sorry. Mm. That's all right. Uh, you can't be finished with your tour of the house, though. Well, Debbie insisted on seeing the greenhouse first. She's still out there with Martin. Since I don't know the difference between a cymbidium and a phalaenopsis, I decided <laughs> to leave them to their fun. You really have the most wondrous collection of orchids, Michael. Thank you. Yes. Well, I was hoping little Garrick would be back from his outing with his nanny. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, uh, I'll go find him. Uh, that way you two can have a moment alone. Good idea. All right, Mother. Why exactly are you here in Landview? That's ridiculous. The Mandorian government is not going to negotiate with a bunch of cons. They just want the crown jewels back, Tina. They don't care who has them. Tina, I was wondering where you were. Ursula, sweetheart, I was wondering where you were. You were? Oh, I so love it so much when you miss me. Yeah. Oh, you're missing me. Did you make the bomb? Well, yeah, it's going to sizzle more than go boom, but it's excellent work, if I do say so myself. Good. I'm hoping to employ it very soon. Well, what is all the commotion? What's going on? Titan is going to wrestle Cord, either for his life or freedom. Now, there's no chance the court can win, is there? Are you kidding? We're even blindfolding Titan so the court has more of a chance. Either way, there's no way Cord will win. And so when Titan demolishes Cord, then I get to terminate Tina? Mm -hmm. But that's just our little secret. Don't say anything in front of Grams, okay? Yes, yeah, she has gotten to be quite a drag, Jane. Hey, Ursula! You want to be my manager? Love it! Hey, teen, you going to be your hubby's manager? What do I have to do? Oh, it's easy. You just sit in his corner and uh, wipe the blood off his body between rounds. <laughs> Listen to me, Grace. I'm pretty sure I can rig the bomb so that most of the cons survive. But we're going to have to eliminate Ursula. There's no way she's going to let us out of here without her tagging along. Here's the pyramid, boss. Great. But there's bad news from Russell. What? According to our sources, it's no go on the emeralds. Then we'll simply have to leave the country without it. I want to give it another 24 hours. What is this pyramid, anyway? According to legend, it's the Pyramid of Dreams. It was given to the King of Mandora hundreds of years ago by a sorcerer. As soon as all the jewels are in their correct slots, the pyramid opens up and the secrets of the earth are revealed. Can you believe that? Why not? But there's more to the legend, Barry, apart from my grandson, Tenth Street Noah. The other part of the legend says that if the wrong person opens the pyramid, unspeakable disasters will follow. The truth is nothing will happen either way. The important thing is to get the pyramid with the jewels to the Mandoran government so that we can collect a huge fortune. Okay, now, Titan, I don't want you to give that squirrel even a moment's rest. Can you lift him up? Yeah, how's it going, Ursula? Oh, it's going great, just yeah. great. Where you been? I haven't seen you for a few hours. Oh, well, I was, uh, I was working on something that I think that Tina will find quite electrifying. <laughs> make way, make way for the Jack, how are you? How are you, Dan? I'm doing all right. Why aren't you two slaving at the soap today? Well, neither of us is working today. Well, that's pretty good. Have fun. Good seeing Thanks. you, too, man. Take care. No, that is so weird because my brother broke his arm. This morning. Excuse me, miss. Uh, mineral water, please. Look, this is the bar. You want some mineral water? Go to the, the uh, diner down the block, okay? Anyway, he, his arm was fine, and then he broke his leg. Uh, Kelly, what's, what's the matter here? Uh, can you excuse me a minute? Yes. What's with the attitude? Oh, well, you uh, rushed in to talk to Brenda over there. You couldn't even say hi, wave at me or anything. Well, you were on the phone and you had your back to me. Oh, okay. All right, now that that's all cleared up, how about a date, Friday night, concert? How come? Brenda can't make it? Look, Dan, enough is enough, okay? I mean, I'm the one you go out with to try to get over her. And I've had it with the role, all right? Look, find yourself another hangout and another date. Where were we anyway? I'm here for your wedding. Not that you bothered to write me about it. I had to read it in a gossip column. Oh, why are you looking so angrily? You can't possibly still be holding a grudge. Aren't you even the least bit glad to see me? Oh. 
my darling. I'm... I'm so glad to see you. I'm so happy for you. You look so well, so beautiful. And you found someone you love. I want to be here to see you marry him. The funny thing is, Mother, I decided to put aside our differences the day I got engaged to Steve. I even sent you an invitation. All I got was a card, not even a gift. Oh, at the time, it wasn't possible for us to come to the States. I'm sorry if I offended you. I, I, had, I had hoped that this visit would make up for that. You could have visited me at Christmas or perhaps in the spring. Well, I know, but Deborah was awfully busy preparing for her audition. And I wasn't engaged to Michael, was I? Steve was just a poor rancher, hardly suitable for Julia Medina's son-in-law. But Michael, grand. <gasps> There's a name that's etched in gold. Gabrielle. You chose him. I didn't. The fact that he's a millionaire is absolutely wonderful. And perhaps it did cross my mind that I ought to be here to protect you from yourself. To see that you don't trip and fall before this wedding happens. What do you know? And how do you know? What do I know about what? And here he is. Master Garrick, Michael Grant. Oh. <laughs> I start to lose this thing, all right? Maybe the cons will be distracted enough for you to make a break for it. Now, this guy's big. I'm going to try to outmaneuver him. You know he's got that blindfold on. Could be tough. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the seaside arena in beautiful Atlantic City. We're just so darn glad you could join us here today. And there will be... Hey, Titan, how many rounds do you need? Oh, I could play with them for about three rounds before I kill them. Fine. <laughs> there will be four rounds or less. The rules are... There aren't any. <laughs> Titan will be blindfolded. And now, please welcome the beautiful Ursula to blindfold our chance. Titan, I'll fix this so that you can still see the shrimp. <laughs> Honey, I love you. I love you too. Cross your fingers.
Mary, before you finish that story, we're not through. No, we are through, Dan. Kelly, you're not being fair to me. How do you, how do you figure that out? Because we talked about Brenda. I told you she's going through a very rough time in her life right now. Oh, a rough time that never, ever seems to end. Dan, this is the, the only priority you have in your life right now. Well, not anymore. She wanted to talk to me just one more time. And when she called, I was on my way here to talk to you about the concert on Friday night. <laughs> okay. All right, don't believe me. I guess I won't be needing these tickets anymore, you know, since you told me that the uh, Highway Yellow was one of your favorite groups. Really? Highway Yellow is coming here? Yeah, here. You could take another guy. On me. Oh, well, wait, Dan. I want to go with you. You do? Yeah, I do. Well, what time do you get off? We get a bite to eat. Nice. Uh, 10 o'clock? Okay. I'll see you here about quarter two. I'll be here. All right. Mm, what a strong grip you have for such a little boy. <laughs> He'll be a footballer, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, he's a quarterback, all right. Oh, please, no. Maybe baseball. There are less injuries than that. All right. He's a first baseman. Oh, isn't it marvelous the way Michael gives me every wish? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Grant. Yes? You wanted me to remind you to send the Broderick deed out this afternoon? Oh, right. I'd forgotten. Thank you, Martin. I love his long eyelashes. Some girl's going to be really jealous of them one day. I wish I'd been born with them. Yes, Gabrielle's the one who got the eyelashes in our family. Mm -hmm. well, he certainly does seem to have taken to both of you. Mm -hmm. He obviously knows your family. Michael, what are you doing? Um, getting some papers out of the safe. Oh, not now. We're paying attention to your wonderful son, not business. I'll remind you about that later, all right? Is that a promise? Mm. Oh, what a fan club. Not bad, huh? But I think it's time for bed. It sure is. Here we are. We're going to see a lot more of you, you precious little boy. Go to you and Annie. Bye-bye, Gary. Mm. And what about me? Do I get a good night kiss? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And Daddy? Yes. Daddy wants one. Yes. Mm. <laughs> 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 Daddy, could you tell uh, uh, Martin that we'd like to have the tea in here? Sure. Thank you. Bye. I think we should call Max and get Al over here. He's got a great vocabulary. You would love him. Oh, we can't wait to see him. Yes, I I'm not mm. sure that would be a good idea. You see, Max would probably say it's too late a to notice. Maybe tomorrow. I don't understand why he's got custody in the first place. Yes, um, I'll be able to explain all of that to you later. Right now, I want to know what happened with the ballet. I have no idea, Gabby. I thought my audition was brilliant. I was positive I was going to be selected. Then, bang, I was rejected. I know Pierre so well. Well, I'll just call him up and ask him why. Yeah, and I know Phoebe Anderson, the general manager. I could talk to her and uh, have her try and change Pierre's mind. Uh, let's not start trying to use connections to get Deborah into the ballet. She's a superb dancer and she'll be recognized as such next year. My, you have mellowed in the years, Mother. <clears throat> I can remember when you would have killed to get me into the Royal Ballet. Deborah, would you like us to try for you? Oh, I don't think so. I've lived Bali for so long now. There's a certain relief in knowing I have time for something else. Like gaze and knock it for hours and not feel I'm wasting my time. Or eat a half ounce more than usual and not feel like I'm ruining my career. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Deborah. Let's go to the greenhouse and you can choose an orchid to brighten your hotel room. Oh, I'd love one. Thanks, Mike. We'll be back shortly. Well, Mother, what's the scoop? I saw your anxiety when the subject of Deborah and the company came up. Did you do something to keep her out? Don't be silly, Gabrielle. Oh, I'm not. You see, it occurs to me that you wouldn't dare come and visit me here without her. You know how much I adore her, and that perhaps I might consider putting you back into my life, if only not to hurt Deborah. But you couldn't have come on this visit if Deborah had got into the company. So, you made certain that she was denied until next year, didn't you? No, no, I'm still staying at Landfair. I'm not going to move back into the carriage house until all the convicts are rounded up. I mean, Neil and Blade scared me enough. Blade? Um, oh, no. What? Well, um, I kind of wasn't supposed to say anything about Blade. What about him? Look, Jack, Audrey is the only person that knows about this, okay? So do you promise to keep it a secret? 
course. Blade showed up at my house before Neil did. He really frightened me, but he said that all he wanted was some clothes and, and some food, and then he would be out of there. And while he was upstairs changing into some of Boyd's clothes, that's when Neil showed up. And to tell you the truth, if Blade weren't there, I don't know what Neil would have done to me. Well, Orgy's always talking about him like he's nothing but trouble. I know, I know, but he was great to me. Wait a minute, you didn't tell the police about him? No. I, I kind of gave him a chance to get away. Mary Lynn, what if he comes back? Um, well, that's why I'm hiding out at Landfair. I don't think he's gonna come back. And even if he does, I don't think he's gonna hurt me. I just wish I'd been around to help you out. Well, I'm glad at least somebody was there to save you, even if it was a guy like Blade. Oh, Think we should order some more champagne? <laughs> I got a better idea. Why don't we go to Lake Landview and and have ourselves a little dinner picnic. We'll get some wine and some food, a little mosquito repellent. <laughs> OK. All right, yeah, yeah. But first, I want to change out of these clothes. So we'll stop by my house, and I'll check the mail. You never know. If the divorce papers are there, you could be going out with a free woman tonight. Well, maybe you'd rather not know. No, I'll be fine. You know? I think I feel a little tipsy. Well, I think you drank pretty much most of that champagne. No. Yes, yes. Who's <laughs> that? Your name. why no one's been able to find it. Still, Tina would do anything to save Cord's life. But I'm not stupid enough to lie to you right now. We must trust her, Kate. Blade, come here a second. I remember Arnold telling me you knew how to crack open a safe. Is that true? That's right. Good. I've got a job for you in Landview. There's a safe with an emerald in it to Grandview. Tina, where? It's in the living room. Behind a painting, on the wall below the door. Unless, of course, he's moved it. No, 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 he hasn't. And what's in this for me? A piece of the action until we leave. The only thing we're waiting for is the emerald. 
All right, you got a deal. Good. The only thing is, if you're not back by midnight, I'll have to assume that you either you were caught or you ran off with the jewel. And if that happens, I'm going to have to kill Tina and Cord before we split. Look, I'm not running anywhere, all right? I like your style. I like working with you, Jamie. And as for getting caught, I don't think so. I'm too good. Hey, Jamie, come on. We want an explanation. Cord's conscious, boss. Can I knock him out again? No, you can't. In exchange for Cord's life, Tina has decided to facilitate our escape. Now, Blade's gone to uh, take care of some important business, which means we should all be out of here by tomorrow. Now, but you, Tina, still planning on auditioning you as a lightning bolt. <laughs> all right. All right, I admit it. I did ask Pierre to postpone Deborah's debut in the company. How could you do that to her? Mostly because I wanted her to be here for your wedding, but also because I think she's infinitely too immature to set up housekeeping on her own. So she, she, she can't cope with the, the demands of a professional dancer's life. She needs more experience. She needs to learn more about people, about life, and she needs my continued guidance and help. Your guidance and help. When Daddy was killed, I was alone, and I was pregnant. I needed your help, your love, your support, but did you come to Buenos Aires? All you had to do was ask. I'd have been on the next plane. Yes. Yes, that's the bottom line with you. Asking. Any time I wanted anything, I had to ask you. Practically beg. Well, I'm sorry to hear you feel that way. I always thought you're so, so strong, so tough, so independent. Really? Well, it doesn't matter now, does it? Oh, yes, it matters to me. Because I, I, I've always thought that I, I understood you perfectly well. God, if I'd been wrong about you all these years, I apologize. You don't know me at all. And I don't want your apologies, or your pity, or your care, or your love. Well, that's too bad, because it's obvious that you need it now more than ever. You see, you appear to be a young woman who has everything she could possibly want. But somehow I feel that you're, you're in a, a dreadful turmoil. That is absurd. Don't, don't push past me. Listen to me, Gabrielle. I want us finally to be close. Now, if you have some problem, something wrong, please, let me help you resolve them. I think I'll go and check on Garrick. Excuse me. Everything all right? Well, we have years of tension to conquer. It won't happen over a cup of tea. Well, I, I hope you stick with it because you'll find it's very worth it. Uh, would you excuse me? to figure out where this emerald ring came from. Do you know anything about this? Lee. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm okay. You look good. It's nice to see you. Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah. Well, sit down. Okay. You want a drink or anything? No, 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 no. Thank you. Hey. Nice place. It's pretty comfortable. Well, did you bring everything that I need? Yes, I did, but Brenda... Are you sure you want to go through with this? I wish there was some way else for me to do this, but there's not. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you believing me and not thinking that I've gone off the deep end, Lee. It means a lot. Listen, if anyone else had told me that a baby was stolen out of the hospital and went home with the wrong parents, <laughs> I think they're crazy. That's exactly what I think. But you, you're more sensible. And if a family finds out, you know, what's going to happen? I mean, the police aren't going to care about that. Well, I have thought about that a lot, and I have finally come to the conclusion that I am not going to worry, and I am not going to be afraid, because I am the victim here. If I get caught, I will get a court order to have those tests run, but that's not going to happen, because we're going to do this, and somebody else is going to end up in jail. Right, Lee? All right. <laughs> All right. Here you go. This is it. Okay. 
Okay, so I will give you a sample of my blood. Okay. I can't wait to have my baby back in this house. If you can pull this off and get me a sample of the baby's blood tomorrow morning, you'll know by noon. It's got to work, Lee. And this is it. This is my last hope.